an opportunity for different, diverse experiences, personally and professionally, contributing to a common aim. And what I'm going to attempt to do between now and 11 o'clock is try and take you through a whistle-stop journey as to why we're here, because I believe it is so important to understand where we're coming from, to understand where we are, to appreciate where we want to get to. And as I look at everyone before me, we've just about got the right blend, balance, and diverse mix of what I hope would ultimately be here today. There is a wonderful mix of policy makers, people who engage with the community, are committed to the community, and from our communities. There are young people, there are the policy makers, there's the private, there's the public, there's the third sector, there's the community sector. So, on that basis, over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to take you through a journey that suggests, on the basis of the programme, and being finished by 1.30, is that we get to this particular point. And Mr. Leslie Faircraft came in, he commented on my ability to be late, the last time we entered, but because he was equally responsible for hundreds of a second and as a lightweight on a competition square, his appearance is welcome, but on the appreciation that he will understand what I'm conveying to him. Ultimately, the discipline and the focus of what we do and the role that sport, art, culture and latterly digital plays in the mental, physical, emotional health and well-being of our young people is why we're here today. And I believe that major games if it makes a genuine legacy commitment as Burton French Spence do hands, it can and must achieve that. I had that ability, and how many have had sport in their lives, apart from Janice Argyle, who's had medals, Mike Chamberlain, medalist, who, who have sport or the arts playing a part or major role in their lives? I think I was looking very coy. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't supposed to be an embarrassment, this is supposed to be a human interaction. And I'm trying to get a feel if there's anyone who doesn't take sport or the arts or cultural activity as part of their everyday life or see it as part of something that improves the lives of the communities they represent. Or are you looking good shape, so what sport? No, no, I'm yeah. talking to you. Oh, me? Yeah. Uh, I, I do um, football in a community with kids. And, um... Perfect. I do cricket coaching. Cricket. Leslie, you're still training, aren't you? Yeah. We're still doing a session. <laughs> Okay, so. Um, yeah, running. Yeah, running. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Running sometimes. Okay. I like to see like 200 people, maybe. Okay. Uh, mountaineering. Mountaineering. Okay. I literally was left in the Lake District on a steep climb. I thought that was pretty cool to be a world champion, just stuck up there, trying to work out what I got down. But I managed to get yeah, past them to hand up. <laughs> made more, just made more sense. Hard oh, okay. And Max just tooted his back because he's action man. This is being fair. That's what I put in this. Um, I used to do gymnastics and trampoline. Okay. Um, art, so dance, folk, or dance in particular. Brilliant. Cricket and band. Cricket and band. It's okay. We're all invested. Fantastic. There's my pants. But 28 years will soon be 29 years come March 23rd. Manchester in 1990s and more primarily in 19, for the 1996 bid failed, went for the 2000 Olympics, failed. So it's something about never giving up and then secured success for the 2002 Commonwealth Games. But in that time, Sport for All, of which I'm a product of, Leslie Fairclough, Janice Argyle, Mike Chamberlain would all subscribe to being products of that environment and that opportunity, saw so Sport for All become Sport for a Few, a historical area of deprivation and disadvantage in Moss High, Manchester, saw a 14-year-old schoolboy shot dead on the streets of Manchester. His name was Benji Stanley. As I still share that name, no one knows who he was, but he heralded a very worrying culture on our streets. Young people were not given the opportunity to develop in life through the opportunity that we believe is, imposs is possible became a barrier, an alternative lifestyle choices. I had achieved enough to be able to be part of the bid and securing of the games the Commonwealth Games successfully, and we launched that youth charter because Geldof did it with the F word and the arts. I did it with sport and said, please. Rackman Wembley, we launched, top right, and everybody came together. And we used the games and we used our sports and the women. Well, on the one on the left, it's always to be a different face in that crowd. But there's enough sporting achievement to be able to have realized all that we see in the UN Sport for Development for Peace 
And all of that narrative is just by way of when people say, why do you do what you do? But ultimately, that is what we do. But primarily, we engage young people through sport, art, culture, and digital activity. We equip them with the mental, physical, and emotional life skills and resilience. And we empower them. Because if they don't empower that ability and aspiration to further higher education, employment, or entrepreneurship, it's a failed approach. And for too many years, we've invested into programs and projects that don't have longevity, sustainability, and evidence of impact. In 2019, before lockdown, we consulted the length and breadth of the country, and we came up with a national plan. It's all there in your paperwork. But ultimately, 10 cities would recruit, select, and deploy 10,000 social coaches, because we realized that communities had things that were being done to them. There was a whole new sector, a whole new movement, and many would argue an industry, that were now doing things to community where people like yourself did every single day because you cared, it was important. There was, an, there was a recognition of what you contributed. So the social, cultural, and economic imperative started to become a barrier, a further barrier. Ten, that, ten community campuses, that will be explained later, but ultimately one million young people needed to be given hope and opportunity. The campus at the moment, this is what it looks like for Birmingham. Don't dwell on it too much because that's the most difficult job, getting people to work together, getting agencies to work together. But as I've said, every single one of you here has a software to all of that hardware of policy and goals and strategies. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to use the logo, but I was told it might be okay. It was not a challenge. <laughs> but here we go. But this is the important ring. Every single one of those countries of which there are 72 Commonwealth countries and territories. They all make up that rich diversity that underpins the education, the health, the citizenship, the, the environment of which we're a product of. If there's no air to breathe, there is no sport, cultural art, or digital. There is nothing. We're a product of our environment. Higher education, employment, entrepreneurship. Everybody talks about skills and jobs, but a lot of young people want to do their own thing. They want to be the new digital billionaires. There are many of them. So we have to be able to give them a broad canvas of life potential and the investment that's required. But the Social Coach Leadership Programme is what many of you are. There were lots of people doing lots of things in lots of different ways. But everybody was a mentor, a mentee, an advisor, somebody, I mean, full flow, gentlemen, but welcome. How are you? No problem, let's just join you. you. You already do this. So on that basis of language, culture, and behavior, and tools, young people had already said, and we know this, they speak a different language. Every generation speaks a different language. They have their own dialect. So we needed to show strong emotional intelligence. Every single one of you here, to my mind, because I've already scanned every single one of you, and many will attest who've been on the competition of combat. You have to work out what's going on in everyone's intention. Look in their eyes and establish what they're here to do. Once you've done that, you then know what you're dealing with. And behavior equals performance. Strong emotional intelligence, common sense, a degree in common sense is a prerequisite. And it's something I'm advocating for universities. And I think those who have strong intellect will be able to make a difference in the world. But a diverse and inclusive currency of experience. Most of the young people I engage with, and the young people will confirm it, that's when I'm talking absolute gibberish, or something they can have no complete interest in, unless you get to a level of engagement that they can understand, they will live in their own metaverse. You're into the metaverse at the moment. You know what it is. All right, well, it's there. Do you know you can buy your own night shoes now without wearing them, and pay up to 500 pounds for the privilege, just for the metaverse? Wow. I must be getting old. But deliverable volunteer culture is what people talk about now. And when I decided we needed something that was common in its purpose, its leadership, appeal, attraction, and value, it would take it to a local and global pace. It obviously has to have a structure. So we have social coach activators, social coaches, social brokers, and social professionals. There has to be a progressive pathway. All of this is in your paperwork. And I've only got three minutes. But ultimately, it takes all of the skills of global citizenship, understanding the rights and responsibilities. The Muhammad Ali, the great, late Muhammad Ali, and the Muhammad Ali Center in 2006 developed a relationship with the New Charter. Obviously, it inspired me, and I would resonate with a number of you. But you had six core principles. 
confidence, conviction, dedication, giving, respect, and spirituality. Is there any one of those values that anyone would not relate to or be able to make sense of or already have developed? If there's anyone who's developed all six, I'd like you to stand here and I will sit and I will learn from you because I'm still a work in progress. But those are, those are the standard qualities that I believe transcend every single one of us. And we, as I said, will relate to some or most. The emotional intelligence. Consciousness, motivation again, empathy. Very strong word. A lot of people sympathize nowadays, but it's the empathy that young people are looking for. The resilience that comes from it, the life skills, and the common sense. The skill sets, we've made reference to. These are all part of what are, and I believe you all mostly have. They're all there, they're all in the information, and they're all within. The project management is the key. Most community organisations, um, Mike Chamberlain will attest to this, map the governance, administration, the ability to manage money and the resources and give the evidence of them to the funders is one of the biggest barriers to communities being able to have their own sustainable impact and um, representation of effort. Safeguarding and risk assessment, another massive area. Social coaches are only recruited and recommended by organisations. One of the biggest risks we have is the nightmare scenario of a social coach globally engaging and seducing a young person's interest, a vulnerability, and then abusing it. Delivery, execution, but the ability to map, track, and measure the impact of our work is also critical. It's a cynical world now. Grants are normally investments, and the return, and the simple fact of the matter, we're now celebrating 10 years on since 2012 games, with a pledge to inspire a generation into sport and physical activity. It has not worked. In fact, with the last two years, we're now in a very challenging place because it's the mental, physical, and emotional damage that's been done to our young, especially those in the pre years, that was at 10 going through to 12, or from 12 going through to 14, that are displaying behavioral characteristics that are seeing a lot of the issues on our streets. The digital age is the interactive age. But ultimately, scenarios. Um, South Africa, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission decided that they would bring together those who, during apartheid, committed some quite heinous crimes with the victims of those who had suffered at the hands of those in a position of power. I happen to be part of the post-apartheid um, era with late President Mandela decided that sport and the arts would heal, help heal and avert a race war. So the action learning scenarios were part of the truth of the experience, getting people in a room, as you are gathered here today, having a common issue, but with the single aim that with everybody in that room, you would bring a real life experience, a contribution of experience, and collectively come up with a solution that you would take responsibility to and for. The Rwandan genocide equally used a similar approach of culture called Mau Mau. They had spent tens of millions trying to reconcile that genocide and they used a traditional reconciliation that simply had, in the ultimate instance, the wife and children of the neighbor, Tutsi or the Hutu, who had committed the atrocity, seeing the male live with the wife and the children as part of the reconciliation. Because it was seen as the most sustainable way of supporting the woman, the children, by the very person who had taken her husband's life. Now, I don't know if everyone here is that forgiving. I'm still a work in progress, by the way. I don't think I'm there yet. But I would argue if they could do that, and they did that with half a million dollars. So there is a question about how our resources are used and how they're made. But the action learning scenarios have been developed, and we have at the Youth Charter over 500 action learning scenarios, of which Two will be shared with you today, and one left to you, because I think we're going to end up with two or three groups. But you can come up with your own, because you will have an experience, matching the experience with me, we up to 2011 riots. It's a brilliant action learning scenario. How do you survive from Birmingham New Street to your offices as a white male with a pinch type suit with a, a briefcase, but no one attacked him? 
I sort of work out how that happened, by the way. And that's a pretty powerful accident scenario. But part of this experience means, as I've said, coming up with solutions that are applicable, deliverable, sustainable, impactful, and then shared. Because whatever you contribute to now will add to that rich currency and take things forward in a way that takes us to where we need to be. Engage, equip, empower. It's all it's about. People say simple, but it's the simplest things that are most difficult. The learning outcomes I've made reference to. Every single action learning scenario will either have had an experience you would have had, will have shared in this few next month of hours, or on the basis of understanding this, when young people aren't given that mental, physical, emotional health and well-being and safeguarding, they become seduced to an alternative lifestyle. Every single one of you here, will you know of somebody directly or indirectly who has not either lost a life, taken a life, or seen you have to become aware of? Is there anyone who hasn't? So we have the right audience in order to be able to come up with something that I will think will be fit for the purpose. Because I don't know what will happen from today. It's the excitement of bringing people together and the nature of which we do. That is it. That's 28 years as we enter into a 29th year. And hopefully I've downloaded enough within your emotional intelligence and the software between your ears that hopefully ensures two simple things. We're already seven lives down in 2022. Every single life is priceless. So I become more motivated, more driven, and ask with the fair cut what I can be like when I become unreasonably demanding. So, I'm gonna hand over now, because believe it or not, it is a team effort. Um, Janice Argyle Thompson, she doesn't like being Thompson on too many occasions because she believes in her own independence, and I think that's an absolutely right thing to happen. But as a former gold medalist, and having met me 38 years ago, and let people attest, who would want to live with me? But at the end of the day, she's the co-founder, executive director, and will take you through the action learning scenarios. As she does so, I'm gonna see if I can pick some dream teams that will come up with the quality of what I believe we can produce. Are there any questions? Have I moved too fast? I was known for moving a little bit fast, I'm not sure what I've got left by way of speed, but... You can um, explain it, that just makes more sense. It gives me so a break. the action learning scenario you will see, you're not going to get packs. So uh, if we split you into groups of five each, and you will just take your chairs and station them near one of these white boards, are you allowed to call them white boards? Yeah, the black boards you get in trouble. <laughs> you say black boards you get in trouble. Um, and from there, you are going to literally just go through the action learning scenario. So as, as soon as you're literally in groups, We'll just go around and assign you an action learning scenario. But please, who, if you've come along with somebody that you know, please don't go with them in a group. Please just split up so you can just mix and match and you're with somebody different. And then you're just literally going to share your opinions, um, discuss the action learning scenarios. We have three listed in the packs and then one that is for one group, whichever group who are going to go through an action learning scenario that is something that you may have experienced yourself. So literally a life experience that you know you do want to discuss, talk about, and come to some agreements of how you would deal with that action learning scenario and what is going to be the best way forward for whatever young people we are referring to. So yeah, if I can... Uh, so I'm already a bit mischievous. The, uh, the group. 